Welcome to the temporarily closed St. Louis County Depot in downtown Duluth and home of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum, voted by USA Today as the best transportation museum in America. Thank you for joining us for another of our behind the scenes video tours. And I can tell you that Josh is way over there, so we are properly social distanced. All because all we think about these days is the pandemic. And with all the talk of the virus and all the focus on it, 1918 gets mentioned a lot lately, doesn't it? That, of course, was the year of the Spanish flu, which was just as devastating as what we have right now, and even worse because we didn't have the medical advances we do today. So, in 1918, it was a tough year. It was particularly tough here in northeastern Minnesota, all the way from Moose Lake right through Duluth. Not only did we have to deal with the Spanish flu, but it was a dry fall in October 10th it all burst into flame. This was the worst natural disaster in Minnesota history called the Cloquet Fire. Burned all the way from Moose Lake right through the Wood City all the way to over the hill into Duluth and did massive amounts of destruction. 1,250,000 acres burned to the ground. In cost of buildings lost, one and a half billion dollars in today's money. And tragically, 453 people lost their lives. What started the fires? Well, there were 50 of them, they figure, burning at the time that kind of congealed and came one humongous inferno, but it was linked to at least two and possibly three trains that started some of those fires that became the merged inferno that was the conflagration of 1819. So trains have always been a problem with fires because the wood burners, of course, sparks. You've been to a campfire, you know what it's like. Imagine burning it under pressure in a boiler. How did they stop that? They knew it was a problem right from the beginning when they had wood burning engines like this one, the Minnetonka. Well, they started off with the bonnet stack, which you can see here. And that bonnet stack had a screen inside of it that was to trap the burning embers that came flying out of the firebox. Well, the problem with that was is that screen got clogged up and those embers still burned and pretty soon the screen melted and everything went up through the stack again. That was until 1850 when Ranley and Hunter came up with what is called the diamond stack. And more importantly, what they put inside the firebox. Ranley and Hunter did two things. One is they came up with the diamond stack. Also in 1850, they invented this. And what it did was it took the hot gases from the boiler that were coming out through the tubes, but cycled them up through this device here, which started a swirling motion, a centrifugal force, if you will, that really beat the embers to death, they hoped. And by banging them against baffles that were installed inside here, hopefully those embers would not be burning and would just fall right to the bottom of the smoke box, where you'd have to, of course, scoop them out on a regular basis. There was also a screen just in case. And even with this method, which improved greatly over just sending everything up the stack, there still was a problem and it still would burn out that screen every three to four weeks because those embers were so hot. Of course, when they went to coal, coal burns cleaner, burns hotter and with less exhaust and with less burning embers, but still a problem. So they still use this complete method, the centrifugal force on the coal burning locomotives as well as now the wood ones which were becoming extinct. Of course coal burned cleaner, still using that centrifugal force to keep as many of the burning embers and ash out of the atmosphere as possible. Everybody thought diesel. Now that's the answer. Burning diesel fuel instead of coal or wood might reduce the amount of ash. Well, it did, but it came with its own problems. As a diesel engine gets older, and it doesn't run as much, it builds up carbon in the engine. And then when you work the engine, like say this 192, when you work it, all of a sudden, all that carbon ignites, burns in little flakes, and it shoots out the stack. So you need what's known as a spark arrester to stop that. We have spark arresters on our locomotives. Here, this NW5, the 192, has great examples of two spark arresters that are put on top of the exhaust. And guess what? 
They used that same centrifugal baffling system that was invented back in 1850. It worked on the wood burners, the coal burners, and now the same technology being used on the diesel locomotives as well. Here you see spark arresters on top of our 320 locomotive. It's new to our fleet. Well, new to us. It's an SW1 from the Sioux Line Railroad. And actually, just to note, it was the very first diesel that the Sioux Line ever purchased. Now in the collection of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum with spark arresters. Now, even as these engines get older, there's another problem. They start leaking oil. And then when that oil goes up the stack with the burning carbon, well, that's a bad combination. That's why these are very popular. You see them in wooded areas. Lumber railroads always use them. And we have them on our locomotives as well. And built into some of the other ones is this same technology. You just don't see it sticking up as an aftermarket feature. So we take care of the environment as best we can. We prevent fires all the time the best we can. And you have to do the best you can to stay safe as well. And that means wash your hands, don't touch your face, cover your coughs. It's not a task to wear a mask. And most importantly, let's take care of each other.